Welcome to Linda Strickland Art, No Rules Watercolor. I'm Linda and this is Schooner and today's technique will be open color. If you're new to watercolor, you may want to check out my videos setting up and getting started on my YouTube channel, Linda Strickland Art. It's my goal today to give you just enough information so that you feel confident to paint exuberantly. So grab some brushes and let's get started. Today's video is the conch shell that is in my watercoloring cards coastal cousins bundle we're going to do this in what i call open color um first thing we need to do is if your paint is dry give it a little spritz with some water to reconstitute it get it rolling again um, if you're painting with the mimic brush that came in my watercoloring cards bundle this baby brings back a lot of water and pigment to the paper, which is a good thing. That's Water is good in watercoloring. But um, you want to make sure that you make good use of your blotter uh, or you'll end up with like soup on your page. So if you're experiencing that, or from what I'm saying makes no sense to you whatsoever, you may want to go watch my Getting Started video, which will explain all this in more detail. So let's get started. I'm going to use, uh, oh no, I'm going to randomly wet the page, which means this. I'm gonna splatter, I'm just gonna put some water on it. I got nice clean water, big sloppy brush. I'm gonna get just water. This, What this does is it gives you kind of an abstract, the paint moves, it takes the control out. The paint's gonna move around in a way that I haven't planned, and that's kind of good and exciting, and also scary at the same time. Where it's shiny, that's where it's wet. I don't know if this shows in the video. So about half of the paper has some water on it. This gives me hard edges and soft edges at the same time without me having to think about it or manufacture them. Again, if you let the watercolor do its thing, it'll make you look smart. And I'm, I'm all for looking smart. So I'm gonna pick up the raw sienna. You know what? Let's not, let's just have fun. Let's go straight in with the pink. These um, conch shells, y'all know what they look like. They have beautiful pink on them up in the shell part. I'm gonna get some of this alizarin crimson, just a, uh, a crimson kind of red. Now I'm just gonna let this run and drip. It's not moving very much. Okay, here we go. I do wanna keep some white. The top of the shell probably has some white on it, but other than that, I'm just gonna let this run and drip. Um, so in open color, I don't know that that's the correct term for this actually, that's just what I call it. Um, it's kind of putting the paint on abstractly, but I'm also kind of putting it where I want it to be. So in other words, this shell is going to have be some form of this raw sienna color. Um, but I'm also not direct painting it, I'm just going to let this run and drip and do watercolory stuff. Think of it as just like throwing some, some color in the background, laying on a foundation. I want that to mix. I want a little bit of that on here too. So I'm just kind of letting it, letting it move around. It doesn't seem to be moving very much. If you want it to move more, throw water on it. Pick it up and drip. Um, I could put a little bit of shadow color in here, which would be a blue. I'm going to use the manganese. Just kind of drop some in there. just because. So this begin, this turns into basically putting an underpainting on in primaries. I've got a red, a yellow, and, and a blue in there, which are your primaries. So, you know, in theory, you should be able to go any direction you want once you have your primaries on there. I'm just gonna let this mess dry and then do the next step. So my painting is dry now, and I, I don't know if I neglected to emphasize that you should leave white as much white as you can. So the top inside of this shell right here is, is probably in nature white. And the little glimmers of white showing through on here are what give the watercolor its kind of sparkle. So leave your little, leave little glimmers of white. Also the starfish. And when I put the background on, I think it'll become much more obvious why you leave the white. So here we go. To put the background on, same way we've done it in, in multiple other videos, I'm gonna paint everything that is not my subject with water. And again, this brush brings back a good mix of water, so use it. Plenty of water on here. So I'm putting water everywhere except on the subject itself. 
I'm gonna lay that brush down and let it travel across the paper. It'll, it'll cover some good ground if you let it work. It's like mopping. Mop the paper. It is water, so easy to mop. Okay, see how quick that was. Now, you know, shell probably in the water. I'm gonna use my old standby, <laughs> manganese blue. I'll mix up my good juicy puddle. And just, I'm gonna paint up the most intense paint close to my subject. And then as I go away from the subject, I've got just water on my brush. I'm just gonna let this kind of fade out so that it's darkest up against the subject. Being real careful to keep my lines clean. Then clean my brush off. I've got just water, let that fade out. Now, that looks cool. I'm gonna mix up some gamboge, this yellow and just put it in here. Give me some greenish colors back in there. I'm gonna splatter, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use the pink. Oh, that looks good. And we just keep going. Closest concentration of pigment right up against my subject. Dropped in a little yellow there. Now you can see where I left the whites. It really shows now, that's a good thing. So I've got my drips and things happening from my first wash and I don't wanna cover that all up. I want it to show through. This is transparent watercolor. So I'm gonna paint darkest up against the subject and then just kind of let it blend out as we go. So you can see that all that stuff that you thought was bad because it was outside the lines looks pretty good when you come in here and kind of cut it out. What that does, the open color does, as opposed to just painting directly is it gives you a cohesiveness and a looseness that is um, harder to achieve if you're painting each little detail up next to each other. All right, so you can get in here with this big brush because it's got a really good point. So the underpainting kind of cements, cements your... Uh, subject to your background, meshes them together rather than little cookie color cutter kind of look out there. I'm gonna splatter with some pink. Okay. So this is a wet and wet technique. You've gotten it wet and then you put wet paint into a wet area. Uh, while this is still wet down here, I'm gonna go ahead and use the cobalt blue and just run a little bit darker right underneath here. Some form of a shadow. And I'm not gonna to worry too much about the correctness of it. I'm just gonna drop it in there. And a little bit of the pink, just cause it's pretty, <laughs> makes a nice purpley shadow color. And the, you know, the pink that's pink that's in that would be elsewhere on the painting too. All right, so what I was gonna do in the background is, when this is no longer shiny, but it's not dry yet, you can uh, splatter and get some cool textures. So this is just water on my brush, and I'm just dropping it on there. We'll see what that does. It's gonna have to let it go. You know what, I might splatter with some blue too. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it'll give me some texture in the background there. All right, now I'm gonna work right on the shell. And what I'm gonna do is use the same color that's underneath and just do another layer, a little more detailed and controlled this time. So I'm gonna clean off my mixing area.
get the raw sienna. And I'm gonna kind of just follow my drawing lines. Don't make it too perfect though, like don't paint everything, just do the dot dash technique, a little bit here, a little bit of there, just wherever you think it needs some detail. Um, less water this time, so make sure you make good use of your blotter. Okay, maybe it needs some right there. It's a pretty important piece. Alrighty, I'm gonna put, I mean, just the smallest touch, and I may regret this, just the smallest touch of pink in a couple of these places, not all of them, don't make them all look the same, then that would be boring. We don't want all the same, and we definitely don't want boring. Exuberant painting here. Make it exciting. I wanna kinda of smooth this line out. Not make it quite so hard. It's already on there in the drawing line, so I don't need to advertise it so much. Maybe these hook together. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, the fun part, the pink. So I've got a nice first wash happen in there. A little bit of warm over here and the pink. So now I'm gonna put a second layer on. And on these shells, the pink does come over onto the body of it and onto the, I don't know, the wing of the shell, whatever that is. So I've got, I've got a good passage of color there, but now I need to separate them out. One's in the front, one's in the back. So I'm gonna lay down a good amount of pink. Ooh, that's pretty. Then I'm gonna clean my brush off and I've got just water. I'm gonna bring it out in a um, purposeful shape. Kind of knock the edge off. Probably should, this is kind of a turn back right there. Soften that edge too. Let's see how that looks. Might need a little more, huh? <laughs> a little more, oh no. Could be in trouble. Let it come on up. I did a really good job of saving white, but almost too much, so now I can come back in and put the color in. Yeah, that's pretty. All right. That looks good. Same thing with the starfish. I can put the details in with a little raw sienna and I'm just dancing this around with the tip of the brush. Let me get, I'm gonna go to burnt sienna. Now I got a lot, too much water. Just kind of make it a little bit different. And you know how they have all the knobby they have knobby things on them, so I'm gonna do little dots with the tip of my brush, which is fun. Could, wouldn't hurt to put a little pink in there, huh? Here and there. Now it looks like it has chicken pox. That probably was too much. so much fun it's hard to stop okay I'm gonna let this dry for a minute okay so I've got it dry yet again and I'm gonna put a little bit of blue shadow color on them I'm gonna just kind of dance it across and call this done uh, as I said hopefully in every video underpainted is always better than overpainted so um, I'm in danger of Get, uh, painting this too much. So I'm going to use the same manganese blue that's in the background and just put some shadowy um, shapes in here. Um, all right, I got them on there. It looks really stripy. So I'm going to clean my brush, touch it to my blotter. I have just water on here. I'm going to soften these edges. Make them look like shadows. It's amazing to me how a little bit of blue shadow on them makes them look finished. Same with this guy. And you know, I'm sure there's all kinds of rules about where the proper place for the shadow is and where your light source is and blah, 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 but it's in the water and down in the ocean. So who's to say where the light source is? And frankly, I don't care because it's my painting and I get to do what I want. So 
put it on wherever it feels good. I wonder if there's a little shadow right there. Let's see what happens. If we don't like it, we'll take it off. That's really purpley. That's not bad though. Okay, I feel like this under here could be a little darker. It doesn't have to be. I'm probably entering the danger zone of painting, of overpainting. Let's see what happens. Right up in here, under here, it's just a little bit darker. It's where the drama is, the dark against the light. I got just water on my brush. I'm just gonna soften this. A little bit of pink in there. Cause that purpley color was pretty. Okay. Um, I think that should do it. And that's the conch shell. Thank you for watching Linda's Trickland Art No Rules Watercolor. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and comment below if you have any questions. And please post photos of your watercolors, both the fabulous successes and the exuberant fails. See you next time.